Now let's speak about the other type of transport, which is the active transport. The active transport means the, uh, the transport of substances from outside of cell to inside of the cell or from inside of the cell to outside of the cell against the concentration gradient of that substance. For example, for example, if the concentration of glucose outside the cell is high and inside the cell is low. So, in order to transport glucose from inside of the cell to outside, that means glucose must be transports, transported against its high concentration. So, any substance or ion to be transported against the high concentrated of that ion or substance, it is called active transport. Why is that? Because this will lead to consumption or consuming or expenditure of ATP energy of energy directly from the cell and in terms of active transport there are many types of active transport in fact The first type is the primary active transport. Primary active transport means there will be direct consuming or expenditure of energy from the cell when it transports substances. For example, about that is the sodium potassium bomb. Sodium potassium pump is about specific protein pump in the cell membrane. The concentration of sodium outside the cell is high. And the concentration of potassium inside the cell is high so you can note here that concentration of sodium outside the cell is high while concentration of sodium inside the cell is low while for potassium concentration of potassium inside the cell is high and concentration of potassium outside the cell is low so the sodium potassium pump usually pumps three of sodium ions to outside the cell and two of potassium ions to inside of the cell and we can see here that sodium is transported against its high concentration and potassium also is transported against its high concentration so this transport needs energy and this sodium potassium bomb by this work will consume ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is the energy of the cell. So because of direct consuming of energy, it is called primary active transport.
There is also another type of active transport. It is called secondary. Secondary active transport. And the secondary active transport has two types, in fact. The first one is anti-port. And the second one is simport. <laughs> in each or in both of these types, simport or anti-port, the secondary active transport also also needs energy or requires or consume energy but not directly from the cell not like the primary active transport there will be no direct consuming of atp instead there will be movement movement or transport of a substance and by movement of that substance depending on its concentration there will be electrochemical energy which allow for transport of the other substance for example for example we have said that sodium concentration is high outside the cell so there is specific protein This protein will carry the sodium to enter to the cell. You know that the concentration of sodium inside the cell is low. So sodium will be transported by the help of that protein without expenditure of energy but depend on concentration of sodium and this movement of sodium and you know sodium is positively charged the movement of sodium to inside of the cell will create electrochemical energy this energy is required to transport calcium outside the cell so this type of transport is called couple transport or co-transport co-transport or couple transport by this way what the meaning what is the meaning of co-transport or couple transport it's type of active transport Throughout this type of transport, the movement or transport of one ion to one direction from outside of the cell, for example, to inside of the cell, will be exploited to create electrochemical energy that will allow to movement of another substance or ion from inside to outside of the cell. And you can note here the movement of sodium and calcium in opposite directions sodium from outside to inside of the cell while calcium from inside to out to outside of cell so it is called antiport why it is antiport because the movement or transport of the two ions occurs by different directions and we have said why it is secondary active transport because there is no direct consuming or expenditure of energy as like ATP from the cell. Instead, the energy here depends upon the movement of one ion, which is sodium, from outside to inside of the cell and creating electrochemical energy. Another type of secondary active transport is the simport. Simport co-transport.
in some organs or in some cells of organs of the body, for example, the brain, the intestine, the renal tubules, transport of sodium, transport of sodium from outside of the cells to inside of the cell is coupled or co-transported with glucose or galactose. So sodium will be transported by this carrier protein to inside of the cell and at the same time glucose will also be transported to inside of the cells in the same direction so it is called support support means the movement of substances to substances in the same direction whether from outside to inside or from inside to outside of the cell and also it is secondary active transport because the energy here is not directly consumed from the cell instead it is created by electrochemical energy depending upon movement of sodium to inside of the cell There is another type of, act, of active transport which is called the bulk transport. The bulk transport include what? Include the endocytosis and exocytosis the endocytosis include two two types they are the pinocytosis and phagocytosis this is an active transport and it consume or need or require direct ATV consumption or direct energy consumption from the cell the phagocytosis you know it means forming folds of the cell membrane when the cell membrane forming folds around the particles or substance and then engulfing it engulfing it like that okay it is called phagocytosis while pinocytosis pinocytosis mean when the cell take fluids take liquids for example in the intestine of the human the fat droplets are uh, taken to inside of the cell by pinocytosis what about exocytosis exocytosis mean when the cells expel or get some substances to outside of the cell for example in neurons the vesicles inside the cells that contain neurotransmitter will be first diffused with the cell membrane from inside and then they will be opened to outside and substance the neurotransmitter is released to outside of the cell by exocytosis that's all for today thank you so much for your listening